Now that you've had a chance to think about effective professional learning, the kind that's changed your practice, let's look at some research. And as we're looking at this research, I want you to think about how this research aligns with the characteristics of professional learning that changed your practice. I think before we get started, we should note that this this table, these five or six bullets, really aren't from any one source. They come from a variety of sources, like a study of the world's best performing school systems that is done by McKinsey. Uh, the research of Linda Darling Hammond and a great study called Professional Learning in the Learning Profession. Richard Elmore's great work on uh, school reform in the United States. And Michael Fullan's work on systemic change in schools. So let's move right ahead now and look at some of this characteristics of effective professional learning. The first is pretty straightforward, on the job or job embedded. It means that professional development needs to be part of the teacher's daily schedule during class time or prep time. Connected to classroom practice. Well, I think it's pretty clear that what we need to be doing is taking a hard look at what student data tells us about our own needs and making sure that our professional development is focused on meeting the students needs. Now these first two bullets seem pretty self-explanatory but I do want to interject that that there is a study that puts these two in a different context. That study is from an Australian named Cole and it's a couple of years old but the study's got a great name professional development a great way to avoid change and what Cole would argue is if you take the teacher out of the context out of their classroom and out of their school for professional development at best you inform the teacher's practice you don't change it so if you want to change teacher practice the professional development has to in occur in the context where teachers work in their school or their classroom and it has to focus on issues immediately relevant to them intensive long-term ongoing we don't see a lot of that in our professional development we see um, episodic professional development that's frequently unrelated to one another so what we really need to do is make sure that the professional development is intensive and this study by Linda Darling Hammond I mentioned on learning in the learning profession says that if you want to teach it change a teacher's practice in content or in pedagogy, that teacher needs about 50 hours of professional learning on that topic in the course of a year. I think I want to go a little bit further and say that the most effective school systems I've seen focus on long term professional learning goals. So they might spend five years on literacy or five years on math. We're really not talking about jumping from topic to topic but staying on topic for a long period of time. These last two bullets are related and we really want to focus on them now. Connect peers with pur purpose and focused on innovation. Collaboration that's structured to off teacher, offer educators chances to learn from one another. These come from a variety of sources but really Fullen and Linda Darling Hammond are at the forefront right now and what they would argue is that if you connect peers with purpose if you give teachers the chance to learn from one another that you really are going to see school-wide increases in academic achievement and that's critical that's our goal Fullen would go a bit further and he would argue that if you don't give teachers the opportunity to collaborate with one another, structured collaboration, you won't see systemic change. And in his mind, one manifestation of systemic change is all teachers using technology to support standards-based instruction. There's one other group that talks about the importance of collaboration, and that is that McKinsey study by Barber and Morshed. And what they would argue is that in the best school systems in the world, teachers have the time to plan together. They have the time to watch each other teach. And after that observation, they have the chance for reflection. So collaboration is clearly critical. It's the key to what we want to do here. This quote from James Hunt is in the introduction to Linda Darling Hammond's study, Professional Learning in the Learning Profession. And I think it's an absolutely wonderful summary of the research that we just looked at on the last slide. So why don't you take a second now and read this quote. So this slide really gives us some insight 
into the relationship between the kind of training or learning that teachers are going through and its impact in the classroom. Let's start on the left hand side and let's look at theory plus practice. This is fairly traditional professional development. There's some exposure to theory and then some opportunity to try and put that theory into practice. Let's skip all the way over to the right hand side and look at the column our classroom application and you can see that traditional professional development changes teacher classroom practice less than 15 percent of the time. Let's go a step further though. Let's look at theory plus practice plus coaching or study teams or peer visits. These are all professional learning methodologies that encourage collaboration and encourage reflection. If you go over to the right hand column again and take a look what you see is that if you take theory and practice and you add reflective and collaborative methodologies that you're changing teacher classroom practice nearly 90 percent of the time. So this research, which comes from Showers and Joyce and is based on nearly 25 years of research, really demonstrates to us that we need to have reflective and collaborative methodologies in our professional learning.